Hi everyone, my name's Shawful and welcome to another one of my videos where I talk about the real world of data. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the data ecosystem. And the reason for that is I've worked with a lot of analysts who don't really understand how the end-to-end -end process of how the data comes into a system and then how it ends up um, in, a, in a database or um, a place where they can go and analyze the data. So what I thought is in today's video, I'm going to talk about the whole data ecosystem um, and talk you through how the data comes in, how it gets processed or stored or extracted, transformed, load, um, and then how it ends up where the analyst can actually analyze the data. Okay, so with any uh, data, it has to come from somewhere, okay? And these are typically your source systems, okay? So you might have something like a point of sale. So when you go to a shop and um, the uh, cashier scans your item, it, it, it's a point of sale, it collects it through there. Or it might even be a website, okay? Or it could even be an app, okay? It doesn't really matter. It's somewhere where you interact with a device or a person interacts with something um, and it collects data. So like I said, it can collect data either from you're going shopping, uh, from the web, from apps. Um, it can collect from your mobile phone as you're moving around, um, you know, points, uh, locational points are being collected. Um, and in the future, obviously, there will be IoT, okay? And what will happen here is that this is not, no longer data will be collected because uh, people are interacting with system, but because systems will be interacting with system. So for example, when someone takes something out of a smart fridge, the fridge will weigh um, how much milk is left, determine if it needs to order another one, and then potentially connect to Amazon or Tesco's and make the order. Anyway, these are your source systems. So this is how well the data are collected. Now typically, um, the data is not actually stored in there. These systems are quite light. Um, their, their job is literally to deliver the customer experience. They're not there uh, to store or process data. So typically what happens is from these systems, data actually goes to some kind of production uh, environment. So in that production environment, you'll probably have some kind of a data warehouse or database. Um, uh, and what happens is that data goes into the into this system. Okay, so now in this system, the data is stored from these uh, 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 source systems uh, into a data warehouse. And what happens is that sometimes there's some processing happening here to make the data simpler, uh, to get rid of uh, data that's not needed, um, or to transform the data in a way that makes more sense to the business. But typically in production systems. the most granular data uh, that, that's been collected is usually stored in there, okay? It's very rare um, that companies will do any kind of uh, pre-processing of that data um, because the production system is really there to receive the raw data coming in. Like I said, some companies do, um, but typically they won't, okay? Then what happens is that as an analyst, um, if you wanted access to, let's say, the POS system, okay? you could go into the production environment and query that data. So you can, because it is a normal database, you could run SQL, for example, and you could query this database and get data back. But you wouldn't do that, okay? Um, or you wouldn't normally do this. And the reason for that is, if you query a production data warehouse, okay, you're gonna be using up resources. Okay, and if that resource is required by the point of sale, for example, to send data uh, to the production environment, you may find that you lose data. Okay, so typically what happens is that uh, companies don't query the live production environment. That's not to say that they don't, some companies do. Uh, typically they'll wait until the evening um, and they'll take an extract of data uh, to provide to you to analyze maybe on your laptop or in another environment. Um, but it's very rare that as an analyst you, should, you would be querying the production environment. So if you're not going to query the live environment, what happens? Well, typically what happens is that the business will have another database or, you know, where they will send data one way, okay? So it's going from here to here, and they will typically do it uh, whenever there's downtime. Now, most companies, uh, if they have this kind of enterprise setup, will send data overnight, and it's usually between like 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. So they'll have some kind of uh, script which will send over data in the early hours of the morning and uh, populate this database, okay? Um, and here, th there are things like ETL happening uh, because what you realize that as an analyst, you don't need any, everything, um, so therefore, it's not going to uh, collect ev uh, everything, okay? Uh, or it's not going to send everything. So um, you, you will get a subset of that 
raw data that's been collected in the production system uh, for your analysis or for the business to do other things. So like I said, what the company will do is take data from the production system and put it into a, a staging environment or some or a reporting data warehouse uh, or something else where you can query the data. Okay. Now, sometimes companies do it very simply. They may not necessarily even have a, a reporting data warehouse. They may literally just give you extracts and put it in some kind of environment like an SFTP, okay? And then you could download that data um, and analyze it. So you'd probably download it um, and analyze it with SQL, okay? Um, so that some companies do that uh, when they don't want to set up reporting data warehouses or you've come in new to a company and they don't have a reporting data warehouse set up um, and you, you know, they won't let you uh, touch the production environment, they may give you extracts either via SFTP or some kind of uh, data dump. Okay, so when you have your um, reporting data warehousing, um, or database, okay? This is where you can plug in your SQL and you can start getting uh, data back about the business. So as I said, once you have the reporting data warehouse, you can connect SQL to it and you can start querying the data. But you don't necessarily have to always connect SQL. You can connect a visualization tool or a reporting tool like, visualization, like Power BI, like Tableau. And what happens is that it will be literally be a two-way connection. It will look into the database, pull data out, and it can run scheduled reports and everything else that you need it to do, okay? So the other thing to add really is that this is really a setup for data analysts. So typically this is how data analysts will work. Um, if, however, you're into data science, what you might find is that the, the pre-processing that goes on here to send data to the reporting data warehouse is not what you need, okay? So what you might ask for are extracts, okay? Uh, to go to an SFTP, and then you might use R or Python to take that data and query it. But you can also connect R and Python straight to here and pull data back um, into R and Python from the reporting data warehouse uh, because it may contain data that you need. And then finally, you can actually connect Excel to a database, okay? So Excel has connectors which means that you can pull data from a database into Excel and analyze it straight into Excel. So you don't necessarily need to use SQL or Power BI or Tableau to query the database. If you've just got Excel, you can actually plug Excel into a database uh, and read the data and then do your analysis in Excel. But typically what would happen is if you need a reporting and analysis on a quite high frequency or regular basis, there will be a reporting uh, database or data warehouse from which you will connect your SQL, your Python, your um, Tableau or Power BI, okay, or even your Excel, you can connect Excel to these databases as well. As data scientists, what you might end up doing is saying that the reporting data warehouse doesn't have the granularity of data that you need, so you need to go to the source system. So here, if you were to get an extract, you'd either get, you'd get an extract that would be placed into a, an SFTP or another location, uh, another folder type, network folder type location, uh, where you can pull it with R and Python and analyze that data there. Okay, well, thank you for watching the video. Um, I hope you get a good idea of um, the, uh, how the data ecosystem works, um, and it will help you when you're doing your analysis to understand um, why, you, why you may not or may or may not have access to certain type of data. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video. Um, please do comment and ask questions in the comment sections below. Um, please do like the video, and of course, please do subscribe to my channel and look out for more videos. Thank you.